lesson for this continuing celebration of the season of Pente after Pentecost is found in the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to the mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea. It would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep of the field, Come here at once. Take your place in the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me? Put your apron here and serve me while I can eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink? Do you thank a slave for doing what was commanded them? So you also, when you have done all that you have been ordered to do, say, We're worthless slaves. We've only done what we ought to have done. The Gospel of Reward. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, bless this word today that we might open up our hearts to your will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. What a lesson for today, huh? Hey, guess what? We have, over the course of these last weeks, been looking at a supper. Every single week I've been saying, we're at the supper, we're at the supper. This is a continuing story of the supper. Jesus was talking again about the kingdom of heaven and about money, right? Well, he's not really talking about either one of them right now. He's talking directly to the disciples. We're no longer in the meal. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? So for those who are waiting for this meal to be done, it's done, it's over. Kaputs, they've left the meal. The problem that I have with today's lesson, it's not necessarily with the lesson, but it's what was left out of the lesson. The people who created the lecturing leave out the very first four verses of chapter 17. I encourage you to read it, because you can't understand why the disciples are asking Jesus to increase their faith. Oh, in fact, hang on one second. I'm all by myself here today, so I'm going to put something up on the screen here for you. Ooh, hold on. There you go. Don't know whether you can see it, <coughs> especially if you're in person and you're viewing this as a recording, or if you're online, you may not be able to see it, but it's a hand with a mustard seed in it. It, of course, was part of the parable that Jesus was telling today, a very common rabbinic uh, a phrase or a, a image that they would use about small things coming out of, or big things coming out of a small little package. But this supper is finally ended. He's teaching the disciples, and we've left out the very first Four verses that help us understand why these disciples were asking the question they were asking about helping their faith to increase. It was a warning that we never, ever, ever read in a lectionary in our services. And I'm disappointed by that because it's important in order for us to understand what's going on. Jesus warns in verses 17, 1 to 4, that his disciples, don't you ever be like those scribes and Pharisees. Like I said, remember, Jesus was really harsh on them. They were wealthy, they were using their wealth for themselves, they were not caring for the poor as God intended, they were being disobedient as a result, and so Jesus, the meal is over, shaking his finger kind of at the disciples, don't you ever be like those scribes and Pharisees, like whoa, it's a warning to them, and here's the warning, don't put stumbling block before babies of faith by being like the scribes and Pharisees, because you will bear responsibility for it. The preacher always bears responsibility for the little ones that they offend and push away from the faith. And now, of course, the disciples are like, oh, well, you know, this is all fun and games, following Jesus, but now that's a big burden to put on our back. Increase our faith so that we don't hurt one of your little children in this way. We don't want to be like the scribes and Pharisees. Now do you understand why that's so important to understand why the disciples were concerned? They were really scared. They didn't know what to do. But here's what Jesus said. He said, you know, first of all, the disciples are rightly afraid. I mean, after all, you don't want to risk harming somebody. Not, not for your own sake. You know, one of the great burdens I have as a pastor are the funerals that we do. And when I say burden, don't take it to mean, oh, it's such a heavy burden I bear. I realize when I do a funeral, 
First of all, I don't want to be there. Because it's hard. It's painful for me, knowing these people who died. And I get up and I, I the Sunday or for the service to do a funeral. I'm like, I don't want to do this. And the only thing I keep reminding myself is, as much as I don't want to do this, the people for whom, who lost that loved one, want to do this less than even when I want to do it. They don't want to be at the service either. So there's this real burden there. I don't want to hurt them. And that's my motivation. I want to give them some hope in their time of hardship. And so I, I, I just really take that on my back and... And it's hard. It's scary. Because I want them to feel like they at least were in the presence of God in that service. That's a scary thing. So yeah, the disciples are rightly afraid. They don't want to risk harming any little ones. And so that's why they ask Jesus, increase our faith, God. Now here's Jesus' reply. It indicates that ultimately it's not about us. It's not about our faith. It's about God. And that's ultimately what the scribes and Pharisees didn't realize. See, we make it about us. Same thing as I told you in the funeral. God, I don't want to mess this up. I want to be a blessing. It's not about me. That's the other word that God gives me. I'm just God's vessel. I'm God's servant. Just be faithful. And get out of the way of God. That's what Jesus tells the disciples. The scribes and Pharisees were getting in the way of God. Just get out of the way of God. God does the heavy lifting. So you see all that burden I feel at funerals? I need to give it to God. All we have to do is a minimal, have a minimal amount of faith. The size of a mustard seed. You see how tiny that is? If you can't see it, that's the whole point. But it's there, trust me, I'm looking at it. Jesus is saying that even you who are leaders and pastors, disciples, you're babies of faith too. You're tiny. You can't do the heavy lifting. So therefore, just get out of the way. Scribes and Pharisees didn't think that of themselves. They think too, thought too highly of themselves. And he goes on to say that a person with Faith that size could actually move a mountain. Okay, no, I'm outright telling you. Jesus does not mean that literalistically. At least not in terms of looking at a mountain and saying, pick up here and move over here, not the way Jesus is describing it. Now, certainly with effort, we could say, well, if we actually want to move a mountain, we can put our brains to it and start shoveling, and within a certain period of time, the mountain would be moved, right? I'm not even sure that's what Jesus is saying, okay? No amount of wishful thinking is going to move a mountain or transplant a tree into the ocean. We're missing the point. This is not the point of what Jesus is trying to tell us. It's a parable. What he's trying to say is that the power is in the hand of God. It's not in us, and it's not in our faith. All we have to do is get out of the way of God, and God can do some miraculous, spectacular things. So here's the point of the parable of mulberry tree in the mountain. Life and everything that happens in the universe is ultimately all about one person. It's about God. God is the source of our life, our being, our all. Everything that exists and transcends beyond us because there's more in this world than you and me. This is again something that the Pharisees could not acknowledge or think about. All we need is to have faith of a baby. Because ultimately it's God who is the prime mover of the universe, not us. Babies just get out of the way and let their parents do the miracle around them. And all of a sudden, food appears. Diapers are changed, right? That's what it means to be a baby in faith. We trust that God will take care of these things. So if a mountain or a tree is to be moved into the ocean, it is ultimately not our faith that makes it happen. It is God's power that makes it happen. So what Jesus is telling the disciples, like Jesus is telling me, stop worrying about it and stop making yourself the focus of it, as though you are the catalyst of God's activity in this world. That's what the Pharisees believed, and they were wrong. It's not about you and me. It's about God. 
in His power. Because God can move any mountain God wants to. God created the universe and all that exists. I think God can move a mountain if God wanted to move a mountain. Do you see now the point of the parable? It's not about you moving that mountain. It's about trusting if that mountain is supposed to be moved. It's an impossible task. God will do it. Get out of the way. He goes on the servant parable. All we're supposed to do is just do as God asks us to do. And so he tells this parable about a servant. They don't come in from a hard day of work and expect to be fed by the master. They feed the master first, and then they're welcome to partake of it. And then they, out of gratitude, say thank you. We were just doing our service. They're not expecting anything else. The function of this parable is to place the work of the disciples in the appropriate context. Jesus, by the way, is not celebrating servanthood, at least in terms of being a slave. It was just a culture in which slaves existed. They are not the ones with the power, in the same way that we heard in the parable before. The servant simply obeys and does what the master tells them. That's what we are supposed to do. That's the point of this parable. Just get out of the way. Be obedient to what God tells you to do. Once again, the Pharisees saw themselves as honored guests of God rather than being servants of God. And this is what they failed at and why they were so filled with many, so many mistakes. They had a hierarchical view of humanity and the scribes and Pharisees were on top of it. Okay? Not surprisingly. Jesus wants the disciples to realize you're not going to be on the top of the heap. If you're going to be a leader in my kingdom, you have to be servant of all. Because that's the way Jesus serves us. Jesus didn't come to be served, but came to serve us. And we, in the same spirit, are to serve one another. God takes care of the ordering of the universe and the setting of the plans for the future in motion. We have nothing to do with it. Jesus is using this illustration with the disciples, so, uh, disciples with which they would be familiar. Jesus is not condoning slavery. But most in Jesus, in fact, most in Jesus' audience were not even slaves. But there were a handful of people who were present listening to this who did have servants. In particular, wealthy Pharisees. And Jesus was trying to do this great reversal thing. Pharisees, you need to put the shoe on the other foot. You're not the honored guests. You are the servants. Oh, I'm sure they didn't like that too much, did they? This parable would cause great consternation amongst the Pharisees. For Jesus was then asking them to live like slaves, like servants. Something that they would just not abide by. The Pharisees, by refusing to do so, proved that they really had no interest in having God as their Lord and Savior of their lives. So this ultimately is the point of the parable. Faith is a willingness to serve God and trust that God will take care of all the details. For God is a sent prime mover, the central actor of all things, not us. All we have to have is a little smidgen of faith. And in some, if you want to avoid offending the babies, remember this is how this lesson began. The disciples were concerned about being like the scribes and the Pharisees and coming under the same indictment of Jesus. He said, if you want to not offend these little babies of faith, if you want to not be like a scribe and Pharisee, here's how you do it. Acknowledge that you are simply a baby yourself. And just be a faithful service to God and get out of the way of God's power and might. Because God, the one who made the universe, will move mountains if that is what is required to bring people to relationship with Him. <laughs> I find this a little comforting today. I need to remind myself of that next time I do a funeral, don't I? It's not about me. It's about God. Let us represent Him. Let us pray. Oh, and Father, we do pray that You would help us, God, to be faithful, servants, babies of faith, with nothing but a little mustard seed of faith, God. That's sufficient. That is sufficient for us to just get out of the way and to be obedient to what you ask us to do. You ask us nothing more. So I'm praying, God, you'd help us to be faithful. 
that other babies of faith might be brought into relationship with you. For he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen.